What is a threat intel analyst in cybersecurity? In this video, you're going to learn about a threat intel analyst role in cybersecurity. You're going to learn about an overview of the role, some different job titles you might see it listed as out there when you look at job boards, job responsibilities, the average salary to expect, different tools you might be using, and then, hey, do you need college degrees? Do you need certs? Do you need any of that stuff, boot camps, all that good stuff? Or can you actually just go do this job with the right skills? Before we dive in here, I just want to mention that below this video, in the comments, let us know any questions you have around your cybersecurity career. We're here to help you, whether that's around resumes, job interviews, job interview questions, networking, how do you find the jobs, things like that. Just let us know in the comments. We're here to help you out. Also, in the description below, you're going to find a couple of links. One's to the job interview course we have over on Udemy. You can check that out. That helps people, especially if you're getting interviews, but you're not getting job offers, then that means there's some issue in the interview itself that you're doing, something you're saying, something with your body language, etc. And so, that course will help you quite a bit and should help you get job offers because it's been helping a lot of other people get job offers all over the world. And we put it up on Udemy so you can get it for a low price. We used to charge a couple thousand for different people at universities to go through it. And all of them were able to get their first cybersecurity jobs using the information and applying the information in that course. Also below in this video, you will see a link to the best-selling, the international best-selling book called Hack the Cybersecurity Interview that myself, Tia Hopkins, and Chris Fullen wrote. That is also going to be helpful for you for your job interviews as well as preparing for those job interviews in cybersecurity. So check all those links out. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. We will have, depending on you're watching this, it might already be out, but we will be having a number of different helpful videos around certifications to help you prepare for them, including questions and things like that. So check all that stuff out across the channel. The easiest way to get notified at all that is to subscribe, click the notification bell, and then that way you are one of the first people to know ahead of all your peers when those videos come out so we can help you get going and also accelerate your cybersecurity career. Back to our video here, like I said, you're going to learn about the threat intel role in cybersecurity. So let's talk about an overview of this role. Essentially, as a threat intelligence analyst, you're going to be that person and usually working in a team that's going to collect and analyze and also interpret information about potential cyber threats that may target an organization. So really, you're going to be diving into different threat intel feeds. You're going to be using open source intelligence to identify those potential threats. You'll be pulling in data from different tools. So tools that the SOC analysts are using, like the Splunks of the world, you know, your SIM tools, using network security solutions, your endpoint tools like EDRs, XDRs, etc. You're going to be pulling in data from all those vulnerability scanners, etc. And then taking that information, collecting it, analyzing it, interpreting it, and determining do we actually have different types of threats that may be attacking the organization. The whole goal here with the threat intel is to be more proactive and try to protect against data breaches, and if they do occur, which they always will, to try to have systems and controls in place that will control the impact of it and then allow your team to respond faster to the incident. So that's the overall goal. It's really about control and response at the end of the day because you're always going to be breached. Everybody's breached. I'm filming this on a computer. It's probably already hacked, right, this computer, even though it's behind a lot of layers of things and a lot of booby traps. It's still probably already compromised because it touches the internet. So just understand that every company's hacked, whether they know it or not, whether they want to admit it or not, it's all about control and the response. And this is where you come in as a threat intel analyst. You're going to help identify those threats and the landscape of the threats and, and identify what's going on with those threats and how they're changing in their TTPs or tactics, techniques, and procedures. And then all that information, you're going to be reporting that back to help build better defenses for the organization. So when you're searching for this job, and again, this is another one that I don't call an entry-level role. This is one where you really want to have some experience, like as a SOC analyst, cybersecurity engineer, cybersecurity analyst, something like that, where you're getting your feet wet a little bit, you're working with some of these different tools that the SOC is using, and then it becomes a lot easier to get a job as a cyber intelligence, a threat intelligence analyst, because now you speak the language. Now you've seen real threats. Now you've seen a real attack. You've usually worked some kind of malware attack. You've worked different breaches. So you understand these things. And that's going to help you become a better threat intel analyst. Now, when you're looking for jobs, you might see it listed as cyber threat intel analyst. You might be cyber intelligence analyst. Could be a threat researcher in some cases. Could be a threat intel officer. Could be threat intelligence specialist. You might also be see it in the government space sometimes as intelligence operations analyst, intelligence consultant, um, 
intelligence analyst, etc. There's just a variety of titles that might be. If you type in threat intelligence or threat intel when you're searching for jobs, those keywords should pull up a variety of roles, and you just need to look at the actual job description to see if you qualify for what they're looking for. Because some of the roles are looking for really, really experienced, and other roles are just looking for a couple of years experience. So it varies quite a bit. Now, as far as job responsibilities, Again, this can vary quite a bit based on where you're working at. If you're working for like a government agency, it's a lot different than if you work for your traditional private sector company here in the US. Uh, but generally speaking, you're gonna be, as I mentioned before, collecting and analyzing different threat intelligence data. You're gonna be maintaining those threat intel feeds for that data coming in, as well as the data from different security tools. You're gonna build strategies around all that stuff to help protect the organization better. You're going to be performing threat assessments or being involved in conducting those threat assessments. So that's just basically identifying potential risk or vulnerabilities that a, an attacker could exploit. You're going to be monitoring threat, ten, uh, threat trends, so that threat landscape. So as it changes, as there's emerging threats and things like that, you're going to be staying up to date on all those things, right? So if you like to learn, this is actually a really good role for you. And then you're going to be typically sharing some intelligence with other organizations. That could be based on the industry that you're in. It could be based on the uh, the particular organization contracts, things like that. But but generally speaking, in some capacity, you'll be sharing some of the threat intelligence, not usually all the data that you have, but some of the threat intel that can be publicly shared. You will be sharing that to help other organizations protect against attack. What about the money? Because it sounds like you're going to be doing a lot of work. Well, here in the US, I've seen salaries as low as the low 60,000 per year, um, up to 130,000 plus per year. I will say on average threat intel, it's usually around 80, 80 to about 110 per year. Once you've got a couple of years experience as like a SOC analyst and you get your first job, then from there, after you get a few years in threat intel, you can easily move up into the higher six figures. So it just really depends a lot on where you work at. In the UK, around 25,000 to 70,000 pounds. And then in India, around 600,000 to about 2 million Indian rupees. Now, what about tools? There's a lot of different tools you'd be involved in using, whether you actually are using them or just pulling data from them. And in most cases, you're just gonna be pulling data from a lot of these. But threat intelligence platforms are probably the number one thing you'll be using. So Mandiant and these other places like Pulse Dive, they aggregate the different threat intelligence data. You basically just through like an API, you tap into that, pull it in and ingest it in your different security tools. And then you try to make sense of all that data, usually through a single dashboard or a series of dashboards. You'll also be working with different SIM tools. Again, with the SIM tools, you're not, you're unlikely to actually be the person like scanning things. You're just going to be pulling the data from those. Same with the OSINT tools like your Maltegos. You're just going to be pulling the data. Uh, malware analysis tools, again, you're you're unlikely to be the person like actually performing reverse engineering on something, but you will be taking that data and pulling it in, aggregating that, monitoring the dark web or using a third party to do that for you, monitoring other forms as well. Uh, and then again, the whole purpose here is just getting visualization of that data and then trying to make sense of all of it because it's a lot of data. And it, based on where you work at, it data that you see at one place could differ very for the next place, whether it's actually meaningful or not. So that's why there's always got to be a human element to threat intelligence. We can't fully automate everything in threat intel. So a lot of stuff you'd be doing, do you need like degrees and certs and all these boot camps, people keep trying to charge you like $20,000 or $100,000 for college and stuff. No, you don't need any of that stuff, honestly. You don't need college degrees, you don't need certs, none of that stuff. It can be beneficial to have some certifications and typically, since this is not an entry level role, you're gonna collect some certs over your career. It could be the CompTIA Security Plus, could be the CompTIA CISA Plus, that last one that's listed there, that's the Cybersecurity Analyst one. Um, you may also, as you work in this role, you might want to get some specialty certs. So you might want to get some threat intel certs. So that first one there is a certified cyber threat intelligence professional or CC tip. Uh, that one's from a place called MyL2. Again, just kind of gives you that baseline of threat intel skills. The second one there is a GAIAC cyber threat intelligence certification. That's the one from SANS. The next one down is a certified threat intelligence analyst. That's from a place called EC Council that also is famous for the certified ethical hacker or CEH certification. Um, and then the other one listed there, I already mentioned the CYSA, but the CISSP is one that as you get five years experience, that's a cert that can open doors for your career. So I always recommend if it's in your budget and you've got the five years required experience, you definitely check out that cert. So again, threat intelligence is a good career. It's not an entry level one, contrary to what some boot camp might be trying to sell you on. 
but it is a it is a, a role that you can get within you know, a couple years experience sometimes a year's experience i know one person that was able to get into threat intel with just a year of experience working a, a, as a cybersecurity analyst so it can happen um, just know that you do need some experience and that's mostly to help benefit you so you're not completely clueless and also to help reduce risk for the organization again let us know any questions you have in the comments below around your cybersecurity career especially if you're a career changer. Um, I came from a, a career in, in medicine before I came over to the technical world. So I can definitely uh, talk you through some of the transferable skills and things like that, especially if you're coming from a healthcare background like I did. So let us know in the comments of any questions you have, and we'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.